Hello, welcome back to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. This week we are talking about sound and music description and in particular we are talking about how to analyze sounds in order to then be able to describe them within sound collections so that we can uh, compare sounds, we can classify, we can cluster sounds and describe in that way uh, collections of sounds. Therefore, we need access to uh, collections of sounds from a software uh, type of uh, perspective. So we need to be able to access uh, these sounds uh, programmatically and then obtain these analysis results and play around with them. The FreeSound API, that's uh, an excellent uh, tool for doing that. So FreeSound has a lot of sounds and through the API we can, uh, using Python for example, we can access all the information within FreeSound and then process it in uh, many different ways. So let's try that. So let's go first to the FreeSound website. Okay, and uh, in order to uh, learn how to use the API, we can go to the developer section down here. Okay, and uh, here it uh, tells me a little bit about the API. So first of all, what it's, what's an API? Uh, well, an API is basically, it's a, it's a protocol, and in the case of uh, web APIs, is a protocol that uses the HTTP uh, protocol, and uh, we can make calls, HTTP calls, to FreeSound in a way to uh, query uh, the specific content of what is in the database. So we don't have to use the web uh, type of interface to access that. Okay, and in the documentation, there is information about how to actually do that. Okay, so there is uh, information about how to access the different sources of information. So if we go to the resources uh, page, here it tells me how to search the different content types. So for example, here in the search resources, it starts by talking about a text search. So we can query and we can do the standard text query that FreeSound has, but programmatically and we can apply filters and we have basically access to all the information that uh, has a, a text label inside uh, FreeSound. But we can do a uh, a lot more than that and we can also search for the content so we can search for example to the analysis data the these low level features and then not only just get them but filter them so for example here there is an example of how to get the pitch of, uh, of the mean of, a, of the pitch of a sound that uh, is uh, 220 Hertz okay so you will find sounds whose mean pitch is 220 hertz. So that's pretty good. It can be quite, uh, quite powerful to do that. Um, to get a, vi a visualization of that, uh, we can go here. This is a specific call of the API. Strictly speaking, is not a, a call to the API because we are not uh, using uh, kind of a, a software to make this call but it, uh, it's an, uh, an option to have a URL uh, that uh, displays uh, the information of one of the resources of the API. So if we specify the, the FreeSound uh, website and then follow by API version 2, so API v2, which is the, the API version that uh, we are using, and then specify the name sound and the number of the sound. Every sound in FreeSound has a, an ID, a number, okay? And it returns uh, the information of this resource, which basically has uh, a summary of all the information of that particular sound. So in here, uh, we see uh, some uh, specific examples of uh, API calls that return more specific information, but then the, the default information is the one here. Uh, so this is the, the actual call of the API that uh, we are now uh, doing. 
and in here is uh, the information that is returned. So we have, uh, for example, the, the core information of the sound, the, its ID, its URL, the name of the file, the tags that uh, the user uh, specify, the description of the sound, etc. A whole bunch of things when it was created, the license, uh, the bit rate, the bit depth, duration, and also things like uh, preview, so we have access uh, through the API, so for, so some like low quality or high quality quality previews, or the images, the display images that are shown in uh, FreeSound. So that's a very good information that of course we can get it all together, or we can just through the API ac ask for some specific uh, uh, items of this uh, information. And then there are things like uh, the, also the analysis information or the, the sounds that are similar to this one. So we can also access that through the API. So for example, let's click at the analysis statistics. Okay. So this uh, returns the low level um, descriptors that have been analyzed, the statistics of them. So we see here the, the different statistics for spectral complexity, etc. All the descriptions, so it's a pretty big list of all the low-level features. And again, these uh, can be accessed directly from the API and access specific items for that. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. So now let's go uh, into again into the resources and um, we can uh, then talk about the client libraries. So the client libraries are the libraries that have been written in a particular language uh, uh, through which then we have access uh, to uh, this API and we have some code uh, that uh, facilitates the, this API call. So let's uh, use, a, uh, let's uh, go to this uh, Python library. Okay, so this is the the library that uh, has been uh, written in Python to access the API. Okay, so it's a, it's a simple library. Basically, it has uh, two major files. One is this uh, freesound.py that specifies a series of uh, classes of functions through which uh, we can uh, do all these uh, queries uh, through the API. So we can do the text search queries or we can uh, get sounds or do combined search or of different uh, uh, things. And uh, then uh, there is uh, another uh, file that is quite useful which is the examples file. So in these examples uh, we have some example uh, pieces of code that perform different things. So for example uh, they uh, can perform uh, we, we request a sound, for example, here, and then we can uh, just display the information about the sound, or we can uh, get the analysis data, etc., etc. Anyway, so let's uh, use it. So in order to use it, the first thing we will have to do is uh, basically clone it. So we would uh, just uh, go here and get this uh, HTTPS uh, um, URL and uh, then uh, do from our computer uh, git uh, clone this and we will get it. But in order to use the API, we need to um, have an API key. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go to uh, FreeSound and uh, apply, so this is the again the developer's uh, page of FreeSound, and we need to apply for a key. Okay? That's uh, a key that is uh, specific to us and uh, specific to our computer and uh, therefore um, it should be a personal. So now I apply for a key and I will delete it after uh, we, I do this, uh, this demonstration but uh, basically uh, let's just use this key uh, in this uh, in this uh, lecture to, uh, to exemplify how to use it, but you should uh, apply for your own key and then use it. And then you have this uh, API key, which uh, it's, uh, 
it should be secret and uh, you would use it okay so let's go to um, a text editor in which I copied um, the files that uh, this uh, client library had it had this uh, freesound.py uh, file with all these uh, functions that allow us to call the API and then it has these examples uh, file in which uh, we can do uh, a number of calls to the API to put them as an example. And there was a place in which I have to put the API key. So in C set token, if we go to the to the where we started uh, before in here and in the examples in the original file in the examples files. Uh, th this is where uh, I had to type the API key uh, and so if we go back to our um, our uh, text editor yeah, here is uh, where I place uh, the API key now in this uh, in this example code uh, what I do is uh, I get one instance of this freesound client this again is a uh, is a uh, object that I create is an instance of an object is a class uh, so this free sound client uh, and then I have the variable C and now from this uh, instance I can ask a specific uh, uh, queries to the API so for example I can get a given sound with a given ID and this will return uh, the sound in fact is also again an object and then I can query this object and for example obtain the low-level analysis parameters and then uh, print some of them or I can ask for similar sounds so I can get the list of the the most similar sounds based on these uh, descriptors uh, to this one and I can do other type of queries uh, to this uh, basic function so for example instead of asking for a sound I can do a query of a text query uh, with some filters and this will return these, uh, these results and also I can do other types of queries uh, based on for example the content I can search for all the sounds that have a particular range of a given low uh, level descriptor for example here um, uh, a given variance of a pitch or a given a salience uh, etc so let's uh, in fact uh, run this let's go to a uh, terminal and I am in the directory where I have uh, these uh, these uh, files and I can just run examples dot py uh, well, there's not py run examples okay and uh, this is uh, all the result well it's pretty long so we are not going to be able to uh, go through everything but the result of the examples uh, it gives me the sound info and that's the first uh, print statements that uh, we had um, then it gives me the analysis uh, the MFCCs that I ask it gives me uh, similar sounds the names the uh, names of uh, those similar sounds or then uh, when I have this example of searching for the word violoncello it gives me the names of uh, different files um, and then uh, again uh, that other search uh, that is in here that uh, finds specific uh, uh, queries to uh, low-level descriptors um, etc and this uh, last one is about uh, the sounds of a particular user and do uh, something with that okay so that's uh, pretty good um, so let's uh, now uh, go to one example that uh, we are going to build so this is uh, some code that in fact uh, we wrote uh, for the assignment for the assignment of this week to facilitate uh, you to play around with the uh, uh, freesound api so in this, uh, in this uh, piece of code, uh, what uh, we are doing is uh, facilitating the downloading of 
a collection of uh, sounds based on some specific query. So we defined uh, taking this, uh, this free sound uh, code uh, from uh, this client library, um, we, are, uh, we are putting together a function, this uh, download uh, sounds free sound, that you can give uh, a query text, uh, some tag, some duration, your uh, API key, and then the directory that uh, you want to put uh, these sounds into, and then uh, you can specify how many results it uh, should uh, uh, obtain and the extension of the, the files. Um, and so what I did was to just uh, write a little um, example uh, that in fact I could uh, type directly on IPython that basically makes calls to this function. So I import that file, the sound download file. I typed my key here and these are three calls to this function. So I want to get sounds from the Zoom uh, and I want to store them in the TMP directory and I want to get uh, 20, the uh, top 20 uh, results and with the restriction that the duration has to be from 0 to 5 and the tag uh, has to be multi-sample. And I do that for bassoon, guitar and violin with kind of similar, I guess, uh, this uh, bassoon I could put also from 0 to 3, that would make it easier. Okay, so these are three function calls to this uh, function that now we are not going to go through that, but basically this is going to be part of your assignment and you will get this, uh, this code and you will be able then to write something like this to be able to get some uh, sounds. So let's uh, go to the terminal and again here I have uh, this uh, get sounds um, file and if I run it okay it uh, obtains uh, it downloads 20 sounds for every query. This uh, of course uh, depends on the query labels. Uh, this might not be possible if the, the tag is wrong or the query is not correct. We are not going to get so many uh, sounds uh, uh, for that particular query. So if we, if we now go to the file uh, system and go, we are now in the TMP directory that I created. This is the three uh, uh, folders that the, this uh, little program uh, uh, created. So one to store the sounds of the bassoon, for example. So these are 20 sounds. And in every uh, directory, there is the JSON file uh, with the, the, the description of the, the low-level descriptors that I ask for and the MP3 file. So in fact, the low-level descriptions, uh, if we just open it with gedit, Okay, I didn't ask for all of them. So in fact, if we go to uh, sound download again, the only descriptions that uh, have been asked for are these ones, the uh, centroid, contrast, dissonance, high, high frequency content, MFCCs, log attack time, and inharmonicity. So in my JSON uh, file, we have all that. Some of, those some of those descriptors, like MFCC, has several values. So this is uh, the information we have for every uh, sound. I also uh, ask for an mp3 uh, file so we can listen to that to see if uh, that works. So now basically we have uh, all these um, sounds, all these uh, directories with uh, all the descriptions of the sound and also uh, sort of a, a little version of the sound so we can also listen to them and we can start uh, doing things with that. So as part of the, the assignment, we are also distributing another uh, Python uh, code that uh, facilitates uh, doing uh, things uh, with these uh, sounds that we just obtained from the API. So this uh, sound analysis code that you will get with uh, the assignment, uh, we have uh, created different functions that allows us to do uh, display of these uh, features and do some uh, 
k-means uh, and knn uh, type of uh, processing and that uh, you will do in the in the lab so uh, no need uh, for going uh, through that now but let me just at least show you uh, one of uh, these functions this one this is a very simple function that what it does it uh, will display uh, we give it this uh, input directory the directory that we want to uh, to look for the sounds uh, this is this TMP directory that I created and then I can specify the descriptors that I want to show and then it will plot it in a in a 2d plot okay of all the sounds that I have there so I have to uh, figure out what uh, I want to plot so this is the all the descriptors that I have obtained so the number of descriptors was less but some of these descriptors had a number of uh, different values for these so for example the MFCC so here uh, we just have the the mean of the first five okay so now um, I am in uh, in this uh, the same directory I can import the sound analysis uh, file so that I have the functions uh, here well I can better import as uh, for example SA okay and now I can call SA dot uh, and I can just uh, get uh, this uh, function and, uh, and I will ask for uh, the directory is the TMP directory where I have uh, the sounds in so this is this uh, directory here and in terms of the descriptors I can just put uh, desk input and I will for example use uh, zero which is the spectral centroid so here we see we see that zero is the spectral centroid and maybe let's take one of the MFCCs for example the first MFCC and that's uh, number 12 so I can put 12 here and uh, let's see that uh, should uh, do something okay so here is the result I haven't paid much attention to what the script is to use but in fact it's already interesting and we can discuss uh, certain things about uh, this uh, this plot so the sounds uh, I, uh, I have are guitar sounds violin sounds and bassoon sounds of course I have not listened to them so I don't know exactly what uh, what they are like but uh, well it's interesting bassoon uh, it's quite cluster so that means that all the sounds of the bassoon were quite similar and interestingly enough the centroid is quite low which makes sense bassoon is a low instrument and the MFCC uh, this particular coefficient number one is quite high the other two sounds the violin and guitar are quite mixed uh, maybe violin has a little bit higher MFCCs and a little bit lower centroid but basically the centroid means that the sounds are in the same register the violin in terms of the the yeah it's a little bit more spread but that's quite interesting and we can learn a few things uh, about the sounds and about the features by right? uh, trying to understand why a particular set of features results in, uh, in a particular distribution. Of course we have to listen to the sounds to make sure that uh, we understand what's uh, going on. And uh, well that's all I wanted uh, to show in terms of the FreeSound API. Again if you want to actually uh, go into more information uh, you should look at the developers uh, page of FreeSound and that uh, should give you more information. Okay, let's go back uh, to uh, here and uh, well for references uh, uh, again uh, free sound and uh, you need to apply for an API so uh, for an API key so this is the, the URL for applying for the API key the documentation of the API and uh, this uh, client library that uh, we are using uh, so that is a Python wrapper to the API so we have uh, access to the different 
uh, resources of, uh, of uh, FreeSound and through the API. And finally, we use uh, two uh, uh, Python uh, uh, software um, uh, files that, in fact, come from assignment 9, from this week's assignment. So if you want to reproduce what I just did, you should look at the assignment and get uh, that uh, piece of code. And that's all. Um, so this uh, was a presentation of the FreeSound API, very much in tune with what we have been talking about this week, uh, which is to analyze uh, sounds and collections of sounds. Uh, something like uh, uh, an API for FreeSound is, uh, is basic in order to be able to, uh, to do that in practice. So for programming and uh, exercising the, the, this week's uh, uh, type of work, uh, we need uh, such a tool and this is what we have presented. So hopefully that was useful for you. Uh, I'm sure it's uh, not easy and there is a lot of things that uh, you might have to learn if you want to really go deep into that, but that uh, gave you a basic introduction to it. So thank you very much. Uh, that's all and I hope to see you uh, next uh, class. Bye-bye.